Hey folks, Ray from LoveyRV.com. It's a rainy day in sunny Southern California. Who would know? Anyway, they always need the rain here, so I'm sure they're happy. So, since it's raining out, I'm going to busy myself with a little project here. Um, in a previous video, when I did my weather station review of my lacrosse weather station, I said I wanted to try to replace the batteries and wire it into my rig onto my uh, main rig 12 volt system. So I've ordered myself, this is called a buck converter, and what it'll do is it'll go into the, I'll be able to hook into the, the RV's 12 volt system, and I can adjust the output to whatever I want, and what I'm going to want is to replace the three batteries, so they're 1.5 volts, so I need about 4.5 volts output. <coughs> Are you okay Angie? cough there. Anyway, I'm thinking I might uh, take this apart and just pop the lid here. You can see the, the red and black wire there. That's to be the, the output side of that. So that'll be easy to hook up. But I think I'm actually going to cut this section out so that I can place this right inside the unit. Probably stick it in there with maybe some double-sided tape or silicone. And it can actually live in there. I just want to maybe hook it up and run it a little while make sure. I don't know how much heat this thing pu puts out, but it shouldn't draw much current. So, let's go and uh, destroy my weather station back cover. <laughs> so I'll just use my uh, res Makita res reciprocating saw here and I should make short work of a nice little square in this plastic cover. There we go. Easy as pie, eh? Okay, ready to do some testing first here. Got my NOCO uh, battery booster here. I'm going to use that for my 12 volt source. And so we're all set up here to turn this on. And reading in here, what this buck converter will do is you can put anywhere from 4 volts to 32 volts on the input and then adjust the output from anywhere from 1.25 volts all the way up to 30 volts. Maximum output 3 amps, continuous operating current 1.5 amps. Shouldn't have any problems there. Okay, so let's fire it on and we'll set her up. So there's an on button here. Oops on the booster there. So yeah, we got an off-on button and we got a button to cycle through three things here. So 11.8 on the input, 4.5 on the output, and right now it's drawing zero amps because I'm not hooked up. Um, I'll just show you how I adjusted that 4.5 amps so you see how it adjusts. So I'll just show you the adjustment here. This is like the on off. Turn it on and that's showing output 10.1. That would be amperage if it was uh, hooked up and inputs 11.8. So let's just adjust that for 4.5. You can see there's a little uh, screw adjustment here. And as you turn it see it change so we'll wind her down to 4.5 dropping oops there we go okay so I decided to solder the wiring right on rather than mess around with the little connectors they have my wires are pretty thin so let's see, time to fire it up, there we go, 4.5 on the output, and we should have a working, uh... woohoo, looks good, looks good, okay, so proof of concept is working there, so now I'm going to work on uh, mounting this, first I'm going to let this run a while and just see what kind of a temperature uh, we get on it. I'm not envisioning very much as there's not going to be much current draw but uh, 
I don't want to embed it in there if it's going to be running too hot. So I should say um, this is something that uh, could void your, well it's going to void your warranty on this part for sure. <laughs> um, it also could uh, cause problems with your RV so I'm not, this isn't an instructional video, this is more for entertainment and I'm just sort of goofing around here testing things out but uh, I think these buck converters can come in quite handy in the RV especially for boondocker, boondockers so you can go straight from 12 volts and then power a lower 12 volt device which, uh, without having to use your inverter or anything um, going to AC and back to DC again so kind of cool little device I think it was around nine dollars on Amazon um, one of the commenters actually suggested it uh, when I when I did the weather station video said to check them out so I've let it run about a half hour here and I'm going to just take some temperature measurements on the board I went through the board and I couldn't find anything really hotter than 78 degrees 79 and there's 80 ambient temperature in here is around 74 right now so we're not getting too much raise, rise in temperature and also checking the current going into it is about 223 milliamps so barely any current so I wouldn't expect it to get that hot so that's a good sign and it's been solid right at four and a half volts and working well so now the next step I'm going to do is mount this this thing in here. Again, it's going to use some mounting tape and silicone to hold it in place and find a find a spot inside there. My only concern about this thing is if there's too much interference, signal interference there. It could affect, you can see here's the antenna pickup for the the outside uh, unit. So I'm hoping I don't get uh, too much interference and may have to end up shielding this. We'll see. There we be. So I just used some double-sided tape to mount that board in and also some clear silicone. Once that sets up that'll hold that in place no problem. Okay, we're still working. So next step will be to mount this. So I got to find 12 volts in my rig. So we'll go over there and show you what I'm going to do with this uh, input wire. Looking pretty cool, though. Here's where the the weather station display is mounted, and convenient enough, it's right next to my tank monitor over here, which has a 12 volt power behind it. So I'm going to pull this back. I'm going to put a small little hole behind here and I can just run the wire over behind the wall there and, and hook into the 12 volts so you won't see any wires on the wall at all. I don't think there's much back there. It doesn't feel like a stud. So I should be able to just fish it through there. Oh, also people might be wondering why I'm going through all this trouble to hook into the battery part. Well, the AC adapter for this one says 5 volts but it's not 5 volts DC, it's 5 volts AC, so that kind of, I can't use its input, so that's uh, why I'm going through the, the 4.5 volt section here to power it. And also when it's on battery power, it's very inconvenient because when the batteries run out, the thing loses all its memory, so I have to go through and set all the clocks and the temperature, Fahrenheit or Celsius, and it loses all its, um, its top wind speed um, history which can go 30 days or a year or one day so I like to have it on constant power not have to worry about switching batteries on this thing also I just like playing around well we're in the home stretch now so let me show you here where we put the wire through the wall just drilled a small hole so we can mount there and then fished it over and this is the back of my tank monitor the sea level tank monitors so it takes I found the 12 volt the, the tank monitor was fused here with a seven and a half amp fuse so went on the other side of it and then this is all the grounds 12 volt negative so I wired my wires onto those I also added a second fuse for the the new uh, buck converter circuit 
Um, the lowest amperage I had kicking around was 2 amps, but I'll probably buy myself a half amp fuse and even lower it more just because, you know, I don't never use those little buck converters. I don't know. I don't really trust them totally. You know, something could go wrong with it and it could get really hot or something. So uh, I like to fuse every wire for its capacity. So I think a half amp will do the trick there. There probably is some circuit protection right on the board itself, but uh, better safe than sorry. And so now I just got to uh, tape things up here and jam everything back in the wall and I should be uh, almost finished. Woohoo! Success! Looks pretty slick. Right on, right on, right on. So that should be nice not having to worry about those batteries in that thing anymore. And I am getting good signal so no problem with the thing interfering with the, the wireless signal seems to be getting full bars there so like I said before anytime you're messing with your rigs uh, electricity you're taking on some risk if you're not gonna hire a, a certified RV technician or an electrician so don't follow what I do without uh, without investigating it for yourself because I could be doing something wrong you never know but uh, I think that's pretty cool. What do you think, Angie? Yeah, whatever. Just make sure you're aware of all the risks, okay? Until next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Cheers, everyone.